Hello everybody, Jay Barino here. This is another Haptograph replay cast for you, sent to me by Summer Loud, and here he is in the upper left as the yellow Kala. Now he did random between Kala and Covenant. One really cool feature of Haptocraft is that you can random between as many sub-factions as you want, two, three, four, up to seven. And I think that's pretty neat because rather than having to do a full random, which you still can do, if you feel more comfortable between two or three sub-factions, you can random just between those two or three. And in the bottom right, we have Apocalypse here as the purple Nerezim. So we have both Protoss sub-factions, but they function very differently from each other. Two completely different tech trees. I would say the Nerezim aren't as good in a head-to-head -head fight until very late game when all of their tech is unlocked. You know, they're not very good at running into a line of siege tanks, say, but they would be really good at circumventing it. As opposed to Kala, which would probably just run square into those siege tanks and smash through them. That's how I would describe the differences between these sub two sub-factions personally. Now, the Nerezim also get fast warp gates. They get it for free. Their gateways, their robotics facilities, their stargates, all with warp gate capabilities, so they can warp on top of their pylons. Now, this is counteracted by the fact that they have this Nerezim pylon power, which only allows them to put their pylons close to their nexus. Now, you have to research at your cyber core. Uh, you can research a pylon power upgrade, which allows you to put your pylons anywhere on the map, but this does stop you from doing really early game harassment with your very powerful harassment units. Like Fanatics, I noticed they're actually talking about Fanatics specifically, and how they were nerfed since the last tournament. Now we have two warp gates coming out from Apocalypse, so he's definitely going for a Fanatic rush, I would assume, because no fast cyber core. Alternatively, Summerloud getting his own cyber core, no scouting from either player, so Apocalypse is doing a blind, fast... Fanatic Rush. Now the Fanatics, as they were saying, has been nerfed. The Fanatics are a Zealot variant. They do slightly less damage, but they attack faster. They also do not have a base plus one armor. In the last tournament, I should say the first tournament, I've casted two. In the first one, we saw a lot of Nerezim play off of one base with Warp Prisms, Fanatics, Dark Templar, and Annihilators. Now I think the Annihilators have had some sort of slight tech restrictions that they're not as fast to get to. Further, the Fanatics have been nerfed by about 20 health, which I think should help. You can see these uh, Fanatics are a little faster too, they're more of a harassment type zealot. And uh, Apocalypse pointing out if the Fanatics are still too strong, then nerf their gateway build time. Who knows? Now is Summerloud ready for this? He has no units b building, well he has units building now, but he has no units out, and here come those fanatics again, they're very very fast. Apocalypse won't be able to reinforce quickly though, because he can't make a proxy pylon and warp it on top of it, he's gonna have to run them across the map if he so chooses. Here come the three fanatics, Summerloud having nothing out, he's gonna have to run his probes, whoa, really good stasis field though. Really good stasis field, that is the Kala's defensive ability, macro mechanics have been pretty much completely removed from Haptocraft, and all of your town halls instead have a defensive or utility mechanic. Kala's is that stasis field that we just saw used very effectively, and out comes Repulsor. This is an interesting unit, which does what it sounds like its attacks push melee units back, which is very, very cool. Well, I shouldn't say melee units. It pushes all units back, but it's specifically good against melee units. It does not work against armored units, though, so that is a, a bit of a, a caveat there. Now, let's see how much damage this does. 24 versus light. This is actually perfect against an early zealot rush specifically. Probably not as great against zerglings because zerglings can overwhelm it. It can only shoot so fast, and here we go. We do have one sentry out with guardian shield, and this dragoon trying to run away and hold on, trying to kite these fanatics around. The fanatics very good at chasing things down there. They're quite fast. 385 movement speed. Five fanatics in here trying to chase down this sentry. The sentry getting healed by the shield battery as another stasis field goes down and stuns three of those fanatics as the other two run away, one getting picked off. As Apocalypse trying to save his other single fanatic, these other three also looking to try to get out right now as two dragoons, the sentry, and the repulsor trying to uh, to hold on, and, and it looks like uh, three fanatics of the original five getting away. Summerloud barely holding on there. Really, really good use of his Town Hall defensive mechanic of Stasis Field there. And just to point out here, Nerezim have something not quite similar, but it is defensive. It is Shield Boost, which grants 100 additional shields to the Nexus itself, and 50 to all friendly units, ar units around, so specifically your probes and any units you might have around there. Apocalypse pointing out the repulsor is quite annoying. I agree. I would say its weakness is the fact that it doesn't shoot very fast. So if you get enough fanatics, and it looks like we've got five out here from Apocalypse, then it can kind of hold. Uh, you can kind of hold your own against them, as it will get overwhelmed. That's why I was saying fast speedlings surrounding this uh, composition would still do very well. The Apocalypse. I mean the uh, the repulsor still attacking. Fairly fast, but not fast enough to hold on against a large group of units. We have seven fanatics coming in trying to surround this group here. Apocalypse trying to hold on. Does he have a cyber core yet? His cyber core is finishing three warp gates. I don't see any other tech coming out from him, though. We do have Singularity Charge coming out for Summerloud, which is your Dragoon's attack range. And we have, again, these, these uh, 
These seven fanatics trying to chase away Summer Loud's composition is Summer Loud trying to skedaddle away. These Dragoons are faster than you would expect them to be. If you played Legacy of the Void, you'd think they're quite slow. Uh, the old style Brood War Dragoons were actually quite fast, but they did get stuck on ramps like like that. So I would say these are a mix where um, they're not as clunky, but they're, they retain the speed. So I would say they're the best of both worlds in terms of Dragoons. And we have how many here? Ten fanatics. This is nuts. From Apocalypse, we do have a Dark Council coming up. I can only imagine he's trying to go into fast Shadow Charge with these, but I don't know. We will find out. The Repulsor trying to push away some of these Fanatics as uh, Summerloud trying to get his Dragoons out of here. They're actually faster than Fanatics with 4.11 movement speed as Summerloud trying to pull back Apocalypse, deciding to take that victory with his 10 Zealots or his 10 Fanatics and, uh, and pull back and maybe transition into more of macro play. Both players with their... With their second bases set up, what's the income look like? Summerloud's slightly behind, but only slightly. He's down uh, six Harvesters. We'll see that gap can close quite quickly as we move into the mid game, but we will see that does put Apocalypse at a slight advantage, throwing down two Warp Robos. Two Warp Robos, not just one. That's actually uh, quite an interesting an interesting uh, tech choice there as we have Charge coming out from Apocalypse. He realized he put so much money into these Fanatics for early defense, he might as well upgrade them at this point. Now getting that Warp Pylons ability, which will allow him to drop Pylons anywhere in the map. Here are four Repulsors. Summerloud deciding to build those, probably the right choice, seeing as how the majority of his opponent's uh, units right now are melee light units. The Repulsor counters that pretty much exactly. And trying to kite these around, do as much damage as he can. None of these have really taken health damage, though. And they do have that uh, Nerezim Shields passive ability, which allows them to get their shields back very fast when they're out of combat. So honestly, any shield damage that these take is fairly negligible. Some allowed trying to focus some of them down, but not getting too much done. Now it looks like Apocalypse again, getting his charge out getting warp pylons and building his first forge. <laughs> Apocalypse uh, reiterating how annoying he thinks these things are. Getting those oracles out of the robo bay. They're not built from the starport. They're built from the robo bay. They do not have the ability to turn on any sort of attack. They're strictly spellcasters here. And I mean, I mean, so are the vanilla ones, but their spell is allowing them to attack. It's just they don't have that. Instead, they still have Revelation and Stasis Ward. So Stasis Ward's very powerful. Revelation gives you some vision maybe when you really, really need it. It looks like some allowed deciding to move out. Four Repulsors, three Dragoons one zealot apocalypse getting out his robo bay and uh we'll decide we'll see what he decides to do with that i think it's possible that yes annihilators uh need to be enabled by the robo bay so that tech has been uh been changed and wow look at all these units that got caught by a stasis trap from the Oracle, those immediately paying off as the Fanatics decide to go in and take out what they can. These Fanatics trying to maybe surround these units for when they come out of stasis. One big Archon, though, coming out from Summerloud as he got a fast High Council, allowing him to have some real beef here. And these Zealots are actually going to get stuck in behind the units that were stasis. And here are the Fanatics trying to get a decent surround, but they're kind of trapped on this ramp. More stasis fields going down, maybe going to trap these Repulsors, and they did! Two Dragoons and three Repulsors getting caught as Apocalypse runs away with his four his four remaining Oracles. The uh, the remaining Fanatics did get wiped out, some allowed waiting for these units to come out of stasis, and we'll see if Apocalypse is going to be able to hang on here. Apocalypse taking his third base, some allowed not starting his yet. Oh, this Archon getting surrounded, half surrounded by... The Fanatics are getting taken out. The Fanatics running in. They're out for blood. The Repulsors doing the best they can, but those Fanatics getting in, doing some damage, and now running away again. Their speed working for them, especially with Charge. How fast are they now? They are faster than the Dragoons now, as Summerloud still trying to reinforce with units. Keep in mind that you cannot get Warp Tech with, uh, with Kala, so he's just running his units as he's building them straight out of the gateways. And now going in and getting rid of this third base. Will Apocalypse be able to cancel this in time? It's almost finished. I'm not sure he's going to try to let it finish and actually chasing away Summerloud. Summerloud deciding to stay and engage us, realizing he can probably win against this number of Fanatics. The Fanatics doing pretty well. It looks like Apocalypse trying to upgrade Shadow Charge, which is a Terrazine upgrade. Shadow Charge allows you to stun units that you run into. I think so. Let's check. Halves the cooldown of Charge, briefly coaxes the Fanatic, and allows it to move through other units. So it does not stun, but it's the Shadow Charge from the campaign minus Dark Coil. Dark Coil is the ability that allows you to stun. Anyway, it's still very good considering it halves the cooldown of charge and further increases the movement speed of your fanatics, which is just nuts. It looks like Summerloud trying to keep a slight blockade on Apocalypse to stop him from moving out and trying to take this third base. Summerloud saying, you need tech! Some serious trash talk. Both players actually getting their plus two attack coming out here pretty soon. I think this uh, Shadow Charge is the kind of tech that Apocalypse needs because he's going so heavy fanatic. He does have this really well-placed Stasis Ward. If Summerloud gets caught in that, he might get bottlenecked here, especially with now we see three Annihilators coming out. 
Those have a uh, Shadow Cannon, which is very, very powerful, but it is on auto cast. So, I mean, in my personal opinion, I think I would turn that off, but I see a lot of players just leave it on as it just destroys any units that they it just immediately attacks, and there we go. Actually, the first Shadow Cannon almost getting canceled, mostly getting canceled because these Zealots got caught in the Stasis Trap, but that's three Zealots not in this fight. Apocalypse calling in five or six more Fanatics, trying to wipe out this Archon. The Archon goes down. That's that Summer Loud's big beefy unit that was supposed to be in the front because these three Zealots are still in Stasis. As Apocalypse pushing down this attack with these, uh, these Annihilators chasing down these remaining Dragoons, these three Zealots coming out of Stasis and are going to stick around to be a pain in Apocalypse's side, so rather than pressing his, his advantage, he's going to have to turn around and take care of these. A decent amount of probes going down. Let's check. Four workers getting killed right there, specifically by those three Zealots. Possibly worth it, though he did, though Summer Loud do, did lose this engagement. He does have some observers out in case Apocalypse decides to transition into Dark Templar. These observers also should allow him to see the stasis traps. Third base getting relayed down by Apocalypse, but in the meantime, during that, uh, during that, uh, Engagement, Summerloud took out, or laid down his own third base. Meanwhile, Apocalypse pushing in with some uh, some fanatics up here as uh, Summerloud frantically trying to lay down some photon cannons as uh, Apocalypse decides to turn around with those instead. Very interesting early engagements as both players putting pressure on each other and getting repelled. And uh, third base coming up from Apocalypse, but Summerloud's is already up and running. Let's check the income difference. Pretty noticeable difference here from... Uh, from Summer Loud, especially in the Harvester count here, 11 more Harvesters than his opponent. And again, that's a gap that can be closed quite quickly, but we'll see what Apocalypse chooses to do. He has a Disruptor out, that Purification Nova can certainly close the gap. And uh, Warp Prism play here, we'll, it looks like he decided to uh, not take the Annihilator with him. No, instead he warps in th four Fanatics and uh, decides to send them away. This Observer though spotting the Warp Prism at the last second, yikes! We do have a Dark Shrine getting laid down by Apocalypse as he warps in more Disruptors. Meanwhile, Summer Loud getting Reaver upgrades, or I should say he's building Scarabs in his Reavers. Two Reavers out right now, Reavers functioning how they used to in Brood War. And what else is he building? He's building a Shuttle, we might see some Reaver drop play, that is a real old style style, really fun tactic from the Brood War days, which was Reaver Micro in and out of shuttles. You could just wipe out worker lines. It was just the, the terror from above, if you ask me. Also researching his shuttle uh, warp speed, and while both players passing each other, for Summer Loud it was too late, but Apocalypse able to see that shuttle. We'll see how he reacts. He's got four he has four Fanatics inside of Summer Loud's base. He may turn into phasing mode here. No, instead, maybe he's more distracted by the fact that the shuttle was there. Picks up three of the Fanatics and is going to look to move them into the expansion. But the expansion is surrounded by cannons. Is the Warp Prism going to be get to get in? It goes down with three Fanatics inside of it. Meanwhile, here's the Reaver drop. The Reavers, you can see how slow the uh, the Scarabs move. The, uh, the Disruptor is kind of the Reaver equivalent for... For Nerezim, and there's the there's the Reaver drop play as he picks them up and decides to drop them. How many more workers has he killed? He's killed six more, seven more workers. Warping in a bunch of uh, stalkers and fanatics around. And will the shuttle go down deciding to drop its cargo before, before it dies? He decides to turn around and pick one up before getting picked up. Both Reavers going down. It's, it's very possible Summerlod may have been able to get out of there, but I can understand from his perspective that was a tough choice, whether he wanted to drop the Reavers thinking the shuttle would go down or not. And, you know, hindsight's 2020. We, the observers, know he could have made it out if he just stayed loaded up and ran, but, you know, perhaps he expected Apocalypse to have Blink, and he does not. Anyway, we have a, a fourth base going down for Summer Loud. Both players actually throwing down their fourth base. What's the income look like now? The Harvester count just widening here as Summer Loud is ahead by 21. That is where we see a big noticeable difference, even though they're the same on bases. But Apocalypse just lost a bunch of workers to Reaver Drop, so uh, that's kind of expected. We see plus three coming out, plus three attack coming out from Summer Loud. A big engagement here. Let's see if we see those Purification Novas going out and Summer Loud deciding whether he wants to stay in fight. He keeps kind of moving around. Purification Nova going out Summer. Really good dodges there as he turns around and decides to go in more Purification Novas. We see some we see some Zealots getting picked up. One Archon going down to Purification Nova. The Reavers trying to catch up and say, hang on guys, we know you're dying. We're trying to get there. They're so slow as they squirm their way in. That's why shuttle play with them is so important. Meanwhile, up here, we have uh, we had a, a cheeky warp in by Apocalypse. Warping in Fanatics trying to push down this fourth base of Summerloud, trying to stay on even footing. Meanwhile, he's trying to push down the middle as well. Summerloud being fairly distracted probably by this. So, well, Apocalypse deciding to use that to his advantage, taking out two Reavers with his Shadow Charge Zealots and Annihilators. Big play here. He may, it looks like he's even getting rid of all of these Dragoons as uh, Summerloud theoretically, I assume, was distracted with this. 
That's where I got to be uh, fast with taking a look at player perspective. So we could have seen what Summer Loud was looking, but there was so much to talk about there. In either case, those really, really good purification novas going down. We have some uh, some more stasis wards closer to Summer Loud's own ramp. Summer Loud looking like he built some Colossi as well. Now we haven't really seen these in a replay cast before, and this right here is the new Colossi. Actually, that Colossi getting picked off right there. Purification novas trying to catch the other one. But wow, gets, uh, we see Apocalypse losing units specifically to that Firestorm. Uh, uh, Colossi do not have a primary attack. You cannot just A-click to win with them. That's the big difference. Instead, you have to micro them to throw down Firestorm. Now, Firestorm, it lights an area on fire and does damage to all units in it, including your own. And and there we go. There go the Stasis Traps stopping Summer Loud's theoretical advance there. It looked like he wanted to leave, but instead now he's going to wait for his units to become on Stasis, which does allow Apocalypse to... Uh, to uh, decide to move in there as he realizes a lot of Summer unit, summer Loud's units are in stasis. These uh, Annihilators doing a decent amount of damage, but there's the Firestorm again. You have to be very, very careful with how you stand in that. I assume each tick, though, is absorbed by Hardened Shields, only doing 10 damage. And Summer Loud walking into his own Firestorm, taking a ton of damage there, going, No! Where is Padme? No! He set his army on fire. Indeed, we have more Fanatics coming in, trying to harass the third base of Summer Loud, checking for a fourth base. Not there as both players prepare to engage each other. Purification Nova! Big Purification Nova! Huge amount of damage there from that Purification Nova. As Apocalypse now trying to retreat, he did a bit, a lot of damage. They're trying to pick off the Colossi. Does get rid of one, but not before it throws down a Firestorm. A lot of Apocalypse units getting wiped out by these Firestorms. Summer Loud very good at laying those down. And I want to point out, uh, I like these new Colossi. They can do a lot of damage, but they are completely positional. If they get caught out, they die very fast. And you have to micro them. You have to use an ability. You can't just A-click with them. Now, uh, Apocalypse slowly dwindling in supply as this goes on. This has been a really interesting uh, showcase here, but Summer Loud, I would say the uh, the Colossi tipping the scales for him, even though he ran into his own units, trying to wipe out some of these stasis fields, and oh no, and here all the Annihilators getting caught in the Firestorm. You can hear the Hardened Shields trying to take the brunt of it, but when this is happening, you really don't want to run your units through it. It just allows Summer Loud some time to collect his thoughts because Apocalypse does not want to run through that. And even if you touch it, you still continue to take the damage over time as we see units, even as they run away, they're getting hit. The Colossi trying to sneak up, throws down another Firestorm as Apocalypse deciding to try to kill the Colossi. He does get it, but not without standing in the fire, losing tons of units to the Firestorm. And now Summer Loud realizing that Apocalypse just lost a lot to that, deciding to push him with the rest of his units as the supply difference here is becoming huge. Third base of Apocalypse going down, Firestorm going down in the mineral line as these, uh, these Colossi certainly tipped the balance in Summer Loud's favor. And Apocalypse managing to kill a few of them but not without running a lot of his units into the Firestorm. One thing that's interesting about the Colossi is the fact that it does do damage over time. I wonder if it's possible to make up such that you only take the damage if you stand in it. I'm not sure. All these probes going down in Apocalypse's base. He does have uh, one Dark Templar in here trying to hold on, but it probably will not be enough as this base goes down. Meanwhile, Summer Loud trying to push in another Firestorm in a Mineral Line. We see some Fanatics over here messing with uh, Summer Loud's other sneaky fourth base, but... Will it be enough as Apocalypse is horribly, horribly behind in terms of supply? I just zoomed out there. I'm not sure why. We do have two Annihilators trying to hold on here. Another Firestorm. Basically, when this goes down, if if the Colossi shoots that out, you might be able to try to kill the Colossi, but I wouldn't run your units in and out of it. It's just not worth taking that damage over time. These certainly seem very, very, very good, and the cooldown on Firestorm is quite long, and the fire lasts for 20 seconds. I'm of two minds on these Colossi. Again, I, the fact that you can't 1A with them is is certainly good. I think that's a welcomed change. You know, oh my god, that was a huge purification Nova. That was a huge purification Nova. Another one going down. So, oh man, the disruptor going down just before all of these can go down. He's warping in. Bunch of Dark Templar that get canceled as the pylon gets destroyed. Apocalypse trying to hold on. Summer Loud actually Firestorming his own units, losing three Dragoons to it, trying to kill the Dark Templar. It looks like he got it. All of these Dark Templar walking into the fire. Oh no, they don't have enough health to sustain that. They only have 100 health. If they just clip that fire, then they will die because it's 150 damage over time. So you just have to be so terribly careful with that. Again, I'm of two minds. They're so powerful, but you can't 1A with them. So maybe they should be that way. And maybe it's they should do a lot of upfront damage if you're standing in the fire, and less so if you walk out of it. You still take some damage, but not as much as 150 if you just barely get clipped by it. That's tricky, and it looks like Apocalypse almost getting rid of this Colossi with his uh, with his Shadow Cannon. 
The Colossi turning around, possibly gonna lay another Firestorm down. The Annihilators don't do as much damage, but they attack a little faster than a normal Immortal. And uh, trying to get rid of that Colossi, he does get it, and here comes Summer's reinforcements. One big fatty Archon right there with a big Zealot and Dragoon contingent. Trying to hold on, Summer Loud, I thought he got Gravitic Boosters, it's possible he cancelled it when he thought that uh, that Robotics Bay was going to go down to that earlier drop of Apocalypse. The game is certainly over at this point, I mean, who knows, maybe we'll see some real big Purification Novas, we did see some big ones earlier. And here comes Summer Loud's final push, he does have some Observisms there as he's going to, uh... If he's going, uh, so that he can kill those Dark Templars so he can see them, and, uh, moving in now, so... Some allowed saying, that was a cool game though. Saying, I like the new Colossi. The winner of the game who used Colossus to win is being like, yeah man, that was so fun, that was so fun to beat you. The, the loser saying, yeah, I guess, I guess it was okay. I mean, yeah, sure. Anyway, that's the end of the game. As a Apocalypse GG's and leaves, Some allowed deciding to stay in the game. The timer's still going, so I assume he's still here as he's just saying, yeah, sure, let's just destroy this whole base. But that was a great showcase of both of both players. We got to see some late game Kala, which I like a lot. Still not quite late game Nerezine, but uh, we got to see a nice showcase of their late mid game with those uh, with those disruptors, with those stasis traps being used very effectively by Apocalypse. He did hang on for a very long time. I would say the balance was certainly tipped. Certainly tipped by the Colossi. And prior to them, it was either either person's game some allowed almost losing it for himself by walking his own units into the firestorm and again leave your leave your thoughts on the the colossus changes i like them a lot but i think it's more if you if you're standing in the fire you should take full damage if you clip the fire you're lit on fire and you move out of it maybe you have a debuff but not nearly as much as 150 because again those dark templar if they just get clipped by it they die that's it there's nothing you can do even if you try to move out of it but it's really cool. I like the fact that the class I have to position themselves in a very specific way to put the fire down. It forces your opponent to definitely move. But it, by doing so, your Colossi might be out of position and then that you end up losing them for the cost of laying down one Firestorm. Though the game may have been won by one or two well-placed Firestorms, that's for sure. There was one right around here that was just absolutely killer. Anyway, this has been Jay Barino. Thanks so much for watching. This was a great matchup. I'll see you next time. Bye now.